everyone. My name is Lynn Ashton and I am the Grants Committee Chair of the Honorable Order of Kentucky Colonels. Today, we are excited to host a webinar to review the 2022 grant cycle and application process. Joining me this morning is Executive Director of the Kentucky Colonels, Sherry Kroos, and Eric Patterson, our Grants Administrator. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. To give you an overview on what we will be covering today, we will start by explaining the significant changes to the grant timeline and then briefly discuss our granting guidelines. After that, we will cover common mistakes that we see when reviewing applications, and we will wrap up by answering any questions that you may have. As we go through the presentation today, I encourage you to ask questions and we will come back and answer them at the end. You can ask questions by typing them in the Q&A tab on the right side of your screen. I would also like to point out that there is a tab titled Handouts to the right side of your screen, which has a copy of our 2022 guidelines, as well as some helpful tips for the grant system. I recommend downloading and reviewing them as we go through the webinar and as you complete your application. The guidelines will go into greater detail than will be shown in today's webinar. How to apply. On December 1st, all applications will be open for submissions and you can begin the first step of the process by completing your letter of intent or LOI form. If you are a new applicant, you will need to create an account which you can do at any time. You can ask, access the applications by clicking apply from your applicant dashboard and choosing the application you plan to submit. The LOI contains a few eligibility questions and you will be asked to download or I'm sorry to upload your LOI on your letterhead along with a copy of your tax exempt letter from the IRS. After submission, we will review your LOI within 24 to 48 hours, and you will receive an email letting you know whether it was approved and giving you access to begin the application. After your LOI is approved, the application will be available on your dashboard for you to start. There is not a deadline to complete the LOI, but we recommend completing it as soon as possible to allow yourself enough time to complete the application before your deadline. Timeline. Next, we would like to cover the 2022 grant cycle timeline with you, focusing on notable changes. As mentioned before, on December 1st, all applications will be available for you to start your LOI. This year, there are different deadlines depending on which application you will be completing. If you are completing the large application, which is for requests of $10,000 or greater, your deadline is Friday, January 14th, 2022 by 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you are completing the medium application for requests between $2,500 and $9,999, your deadline is Friday, January 28th, 2022, by 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The last deadline is for small grant applications for requests of $2,499 or less, which is due by Friday, February 11th, 2022, by 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please note, applications will not be accepted past the due dates except in very extreme circumstances. We have altered the due dates to ensure there is enough time to thoroughly review each application and reach out should we have any questions for you. We strongly recommend you submit your applications prior to the deadline and encourage you to begin thinking about your potential requests and gathering the necessary information. After submission, your application will be reviewed by Eric, Sherry, and myself before being reviewed by our grants committee and then assigned to our trustees for vetting. As a member of the board of trustees, we'll contact you to set up a visit and to discuss your application. 
After all grants are reviewed, the board will vote on the grants in early June, and you will be notified shortly whether your grant was approved or denied. Another change to this year's timeline is that if your grant is approved, you will have from the date you receive your approval letter during the grant impact week, which will be the third week in June, until October 31st, 2022, to upload all receipts and submit all documentation. At this time, let's move on to review the 2022 guidelines. As mentioned before, this will be a brief overview as compared to past years and we highly recommend you review the complete guidelines that are available for you to download today, or you can find them on our website. Eligibility. You will be asked to answer these eligibility questions when you submit your LOI form. Please take a moment to review the questions listed here, and if you have any questions, please type them now. Ineligible organizations. Please take a moment to review the types of organizations that we do not fund. If you have any questions on whether your organization qualifies for a grant, please type them now or feel free to reach out to Eric after today's webinar. <clears throat> what we fund. Funding is limited to items slash projects that can be seen or felt. Requests for funding from the Kentucky Colonels should be for projects that will directly benefit as many of the clients you serve as possible. Please reach out to us prior to applying if you have any questions on whether a project is eligible for funding. You can also find a list of items that we do not fund in our guidelines. Reporting and reimbursements. As mentioned before, should funds be awarded, you will have until Monday, October 31st, 2022, to provide the documentation specific to your grant expenditures to claim your grant funds. The Good Works program uses a reimbursement process, meaning that you will not receive a check until documentation has been uploaded. All items must be purchased between the date of the grant award in, in mid-June and Monday, October 31st, 2022. Any item that is purchased prior to notification of the grant award will not be eligible for reimbursement. If the deadline for grant completion cannot be met, the recipient must request and receive an extension by email from the Kentucky Colonels if the funding commitment is to remain in effect. Such request must be received no later then Friday, September 30th, 2022. For those of you that applied this year for the 2021 cycle, many of you were approved <clears throat> extensions due to supply chain issues and construction issues. But please be aware that for the 2022 cycle, we will not be doing the amount of extensions that we did. We understand the issues arrive, but it has to be a significant reason for you to be approved for grant extension. Advisory information, matching grants. The Kentucky Colonels will often make partial grants on a matching basis, meaning that the applicant must raise the rest of the amount requested from other sources, including its own. If approved for matching funds, you will need to provide the matching partner when you're requesting reimbursement. And you need to start thinking about that uh, before the application is reviewed. As a reminder from previous years, if you are a large multi-hospital system, know that only one hospital is eligible to apply per year. Large multi-hospital systems are defined as any hospital corporation operating five or more facilities within the Commonwealth. Also, please note that large hospital systems are carefully vetted and are generally not funded. Please reach out to us before applying to determine if your organization is eligible. If your organization is a part of a large hospital system and awarded a grant, you may not be eligible to receive a grant in the next grant cycle. 
For the 2022 grant cycle, we will be taking a closer look at financial information provided by your organization to ensure that we are providing grants to the organizations with the greatest need. The four financial pieces of information we'll, we will be looking at when reviewing applications are cash reserves, total reserves, your current ratio, and surplus deficit trends. These financial ratios will only be used as an additional guideline and will not be the only factor considered during the review of each application. Recognizing the kernels. Grant recipients are expected to acknowledge the Kentucky kernels. Items such as plaques, decals, vanity license plates will be provided to the recipient by the Kentucky kernels. Items not provided by the Kentucky kernels will have to have our approval. Reciprocal PR is appreciated in the form of social media and or newsletters. If approved for a grant, we may reach out to you for information such as pictures, quotes, or other relevant information for the grant received. We have provided a follow-up form through the grant system for you to upload information mentioned above that will be available after you submit your request for payment forms. Common issues. Next, we would like to cover a few common issues that we see when reviewing the applications. The most common issue we see are with the grant items request form and the bids provided. The bids that are required depend upon the total amount you are requesting. If you are applying for a grant of less than $2,499, then you will only need to get one bid per item and you do not have to upload copies of the bids into the system. But please remember that when the trustee vets your grant, they may ask to see that bid. If you are requesting between $2,500 and $9,999, you are required to secure two bids for all items and are also required to upload copies of those bids. If your request is for $10,000 or more, you are required to get three bids for every item and all bids must be uploaded. The bids uploaded for your requests need to include vendor information, picture or description of the item and the price of the item. Please know that we do not accept verbal bids or links to items as copies of your bid. When completing the grant item request form and uploading bids, please be sure to thoroughly research the items you are requesting to ensure you are requesting correct items. This past year, we had many organizations reach out to us due to finding alternative items instead of the items listed in your grant application. We encourage you to make sure that the items you are requested when completing the application will fulfill your organization's needs. We do not allow you to change your requested items. The other common issue among many applications is wrong or incomplete financial documents being uploaded. On the application, we are requesting two pieces of financial information, your 990s and your organization's financial statements. For the 990s, we are requesting your two most recent complete 990s. We see many organizations who only upload the first two pages or only partially upload the 990, but not the complete 990, which is what we want to see. If you have any issues uploading due to the file size, you can try to reduce the size or reach out to Eric for assistance. The other financial information requested is your organization's financial statements for the past two years. This can be an audit report if available, or we can accept profit loss statements along with balance sheets. If you have any questions regarding the financial documents requested, please reach out to Eric. And please know that uploading the wrong or incomplete financial information will negatively impact your request. I would also like to add that any of you who are new to our process, uh, please know that you have Eric as a great resource and he will be happy to help you with any questions that you might have. 
Thank you, Lynn. So I would, I would like to answer any questions that you might have, type them in the Q&A. Uh, Tyler, I know I need to respond back to you in regards to fiscal sponsor, and we'll do that. I'll have Eric Patterson reach out to you after this meeting. I'd also like to note that all of the dollars the Kentucky Colonels grant to you all, and there's when I look through the list of everyone that's here, there's some great partners out there. A shout out to our neighbor next door, as well as some brand new nonprofits. So we're very excited about that. But all the dollars that we grant out come from individual Kentucky colonels that live in 59 countries and every state of the union. They think so highly of what you do that they want to help your mission, be it the cultural side, the social service side, or the animal welfare side. So we are delighted to be the conduit from those donations. So I'd like everyone to be aware of that. Uh, is there any questions at this point outside of Taylor? Okay, and you're welcome again, as Lynn noted, to reach out to Eric Patterson. He is uh, the one that keeps this program hum humming. And let me go back and restate. Eric, can you pull up the screen for the deadlines, please? Yeah. Uh, yes, and it looks like there are a few other questions that popped in as well, but here's Okay, the, well, the help me on one. those. Okay. Uh, so as Lynn mentioned, these timelines for the Kentucky Colonel grants have changed significantly. And they've done that because the, traditionally the last week that grant applications are due, we are flooded with over 100 different grant applications. And we want to thoroughly review the applications and give you the opportunity to correct mistakes. This is a grants program where if you type something wrong, we're not going to just toss you out because we understand how valuable your services are. So please abide by those deadlines and allow us adequate time to review your grant application. So, Eric, I'm not seeing questions. Could you help me out? Yep. Okay. So let's see. Let's scroll here to the top. Um, so the first one was what qualifies as a small, medium, large grant. Um, and that just depends on just the amount that you're applying for. Um, so as you see on the timeline, the 2,500 or less um, deadline in February, the medium application up to 9,999 is due on the 28th. And then for the larger applications of 10,000 or greater, those are the ones that are due on January 14th. Um, let's see. And when we had a question, if you are not a hospital system, but have multiple locations, can you submit multiple applications for multiple locations. Um, so this one, you can only submit one if per organization. If you have different EIA numbers or for different ones, different cities, you can maybe submit multiple requests like YMCA's have different locations. But usually the rule is if you have the same EIN number, only one per um, organization. Um, and there's another question, are endowments and investment portfolios considered reserve funds when you look at our applications? Uh, sometimes it can be included in one of the calculations. Uh, kind of depends if the investments or endowments are restricted or unrestricted. Um, but it, it does show up in some of the ratios. The next one. So the question from Susan, uh, since you'll be submitting for Catholic Charities for one of their 10 programs, um, even though it is just for that one program, we'll want to see it, all the information for Catholic Charities as a whole and not just for that program. And then Christine has a question about the religious requirement. Um, that one is only if your services are restricted towards, they have to participate in those religious activities. So if it's open to anyone, regardless of whether or not they can participate, that won't cause any issues. Um, that's just if they're required to take a religious class or go through any other religious activity. Uh, 
the question from Rebecca. Um, you have your 990s, but we, we do request both 990s and then also your own financial statements, whether it's audits or if you don't have an audit, provide balance sheets along with profit loss statements. So um, whatever you all have for your statements, um, we can work with you. Kathy, you've got a question of, is it appropriate to have two small projects and one grant request? You can do that. The projects would be items. And as you're aware, both items might not be funded, but yes, you can list them. And Sarah, your question goes in line with that. Multiple items for a large grant. Yes, you can list those on the application. Um, for those of you that are new to the Kentucky Colonel's grant program, the trustees, as Lynn mentioned, will review, will be assigned grant applications and nonprofits, and they will review those applications and they determine actually what you're given. And it could be completely supported. Your grant application could be completely funded. It could be partially funded. It could be a matching grant as Lynn reviewed. So when you have multiple items, they could easily say, well, I'm going to do items one through five and not six and seven. Just be aware of that. Eric, did we get them all? I'm still scrolling through. It looks like we still have. Linda, Linda has a question about grant fund for food. Absolutely. We've done very similar meals on wheels type programs, um, as well as food banks where meal seniors would pick boxes up of food. That's very common for this organization. Okay. We had a, here's a question about what is the general match for vehicles? Um, usually we'll match up to 15,000 uh, for any vehicles. Eric, do you want to touch on the calculations for the ratios? Yeah, I can go over that again real quick. Erica has that question. Yeah, so the, the four um, calculations, the first one is months of cash on hand. Um, the, and then the next one's a month of unrestricted cash in investments. And so we look at that on your 990, um, how much cash, cash receivable investments you have as along with divided by, by your total expenses. Um, the next one is the current ratio, which looks at your, your assets and liabilities. And then the last one is the surplus slash deficit, which looks at your total revenue and expenses over a three-year period. Those ratios, if you just go to uh, your Google machine, those are very typical ratios that philanthropic organizations look at in determining grants. And it's just a tool in our toolbox. You won't be excluded um, by those ratios. We just want to be able to see them. We in the past have denied funding to grant applications because of the healthiness of the organization. We just want to verify that it is at this time a healthy organization. Yeah. David, you you asked a question about a national nonprofit. Do you see financials for your national or for your local? We want to see local, but I'll tell you, we'll go to your 990 national as yeah. well. And if your EIN number is, is through the national, then you have to provide your national. You have to base that off of your EIN number. Um, I've seen several questions of if you've received funding this past year, are you eligible this year? Um, we do look at the organizations who have received a grant three years in a row, uh, but all the ones who are asked to set out have been notified. Um, so if you haven't received an email from us, you all are eligible to apply again this year. Uh, I see a question by Chad in regards to do we fund requests up to 50000 to to $100,000. Um, 
Chad, traditionally not. Uh, we're looking at granting our past history has been $2 million, $2.1 million. The average grant size is seven to $8,000. That doesn't mean you can't apply for that type of money, but I would not expect to receive that type of money. So hang on folks, we're both Eric and I are scrolling through questions. Uh, Lauren, a question in regards to page limit for LOI. There is not, but the information needed on that really just needs to be one page. It's two or three paragraphs. We don't want you to write War and Peace novel just for a letter of intent or don't write everything that you're going to put in the in the and when you're answering the grant in the letter and duplicate that eric did you ask answer hannah's question about the types of requests let me see we're sitting in two different rooms at the <laughs> headquarters of kentucky colonel so i can't look at eric and say hey did you get that one <laughs> so Bear with us. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I haven't answered that one. Um, so we do look at how many people you impact. Um, and we always encourage uh, with any of the grants that choose the projects that will impact the most people and is the greatest need for your organization. Uh, so I would say that would factor in. Um, um, here's a question from Ann. Um, so if you're a smaller nonprofit and you only have your 990 in, or even if you're not required to file the 990, uh, just upload the 990 in or your the letter saying that you're not required to file that as well. Uh, we accept that in place of that. Christine, you've asked a question in regards to renovating a kitchen. I think you need to call us. Um, because we have renovated kitchens before, but please give Eric a phone call after this webinar and let's understand who you are and what that kitchen, the full, the full uses of that kitchen. Linda Wood, you did a bid for foods by restaurants to cook. That is in line with here in Louisville, Masterson Station does the food for the Meals on Wheels programs. So yes, we have funded programs like that. So uh, Sarah, we, we certainly do fund materials. Labor depends upon what that labor would be. And I think that that would be a call to Eric uh, whether the labor would be funded or not. Traditionally, labor that is specialized will yeah. fund, you know, like painting but, walls, that type of labor. No, we wouldn't would fund. Uh, Brittany, you asked a question about uh, having money in an unrestricted investment mm -hmm. account. We certainly take a look at that. Um, I wouldn't use the word penalized, but we certainly do review that. Lauren, you've got a question about a tractor. Uh, yes, a tractor is a, yeah. a vehicle, vehicle, and we have helped fund tractors before. Yeah, Kate, uh, the ratios that we're looking at in no way is are we looking at them to penalize anyone. Uh, we just want to see what the organization has, what what the case is for them financially, that that they are secure. Uh, so in, in no way would you be penalized. Joel, the you've got a question about capital projects and parking lot repairs. Uh, yes, we do a lot of parking lot repairs and we do a lot of building improvements. Um, what we won't do is if you need $13 million to build a building, we won't be part of that capital project or we won't help you build the building. But if you need a parking lot repaired as part of your capital project, 
then yes, we would yeah. look at that. Joel, also know that you have to own the building or you have to have a really long lease for us to do improvements. Uh, we won't do improvements if you if you rent. Here's a question from uh, Jeffrey uh, asking about how to get the vehicle quotes. So what we look for there is to get the three quotes and even though the inventory is always changing and we, we understand that that won't be the vehicle you'll be purchasing in a few months. Uh, what we ask is you just get um, idea of what type of vehicle you're looking at um, and get three examples of that um, from different vendors. Danny asked a question about how many grants we provided last year. So in 2021, it will be about 281 grants if you incorporate emergency grants in that. Uh, during our typical grant period, we did 275. As many of you are aware, we have an emergency grant fund, and those are for items that truly are emergency, such as we just provided $10,000 to the Garrett County Food Pantry, because as many of you know, they lost everything in a fire. Uh, so by the end of 2021, it'll probably be about 281. Danny, that's a pretty common number over the last several years. Okay, there's a few questions about um, eligibility concerning like age of organization. Um, so to be eligible this year, you would have to be um, made a nonprofit and received your exemption letter from the IRS in 2017. Um, so if it was after that, uh, please reach out to us, but you probably would not be eligible this year. Um, and depending on what it was, it'd be in the future. Um, but this year is 2017 and before. There are several questions about the LOI due. The application is opening up December 1st, which is a month earlier than traditional kernel deadlines. So your LOL is due at any point. You just have to do that first before Eric will open up the application to you. And again, that's December 1st, which as we all know, it's knocking on the door in a couple of weeks. Um, here's a question about what we consider as a long lease. Um, for the grant, we consider any lease over 20 years as a long lease uh, when taking the count, um, building improvements. I'm scrolling through. I think we've answered most of them, and I'll go back through and Services. Make sure any of the ones that we haven't answered, I can all email you about. Mary, you, sorry, Eric, to step over you. Mary, you asked a question about medical reimbursements for animal services. We don't do that, but what we have funded is X number of spays and neuters for a clinic. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question feel free. Eric knows everything. Feel free to reach out to him. Um, but traditionally, don't do reimbursements. Chris uh, asked about funding video surveillance cameras. Absolutely, we've done that. Hang on, I'm scrolling down. Uh, we had quite a few questions about Eric sending the slides as well as recording this webinar. Of course, he will do both of that. Um, there's a question about funding full cost of a vehicle. Traditionally not. It's, it, it'll be partial cost. We do, land, I see an Ashton for a question in regards to landscaping needs. Yes, we have certainly done that. Jeanette, you noted using last year's quotes. Um, my concern on that would be that the prices change because as we know, we're starting into inflation. So I would not uh, be comfortable looking at last year's quotes. 
I think you would probably need to circle back to those vendors and make sure their prices do not do not rise. We don't provide training. That's interesting. Molly, you've asked a very interesting question on reimbursing the cost of training for a therapy dog to bring to your center. We traditionally don't fund any type of staffing um, needs such as trips to conventions or equipment, or office equipment, and, yeah. or therapist. Um but we have worked a lot with different groups that deal with therapy dogs. So your training, even though it's specialized, it doesn't, it's not covered by the organization. There's a question, Gianna, sorry if I mispronounced your name how to phrase or include funding for salaries, don't even do it. If we see that that's included, that is one of those items that we do not fund as salaries. Yeah. Also, Allison, we do not fund video production or any type of uh, marketing needs that way. We, we may pay for brochures for an organization, uh, but we would not pay for any of the creative to have them created. Yeah. Paula, we have done funding for conference room renovations. Absolutely. And Kate, the letter of intent window opens on December 1st. Tom, I understand your renovations are great. Uh, Maria, one of our board members out in the east uh, eastern part of Kentucky, called me and said how wonderful it is. Um, and, but to answer your question, yes, solar pa panels, um, have, we have funded those in the past. Chris, we do fund gym equipment. And we do, Rhonda, we do fund outdoor equipment. Just ask the Boy Scouts. They've received yeah. quite a few pieces. Billy, the question about grant two years in a row, yes, uh, you you can apply multiple years in a row. Prior to this webinar, if there is a nonprofit that we're asking them to sit out a year, they would have been notified. So all of you are certainly eligible to apply if you fit the criteria. Annette, do you fund utilities? We do not. Yes. Caroline, we're re Caroline Johnson, we're reading your question. Hang yeah. on. We have funded gifts that are very focused and given to your clients. So such as we wouldn't fund open-ended Walmart gift cards. No. Um, so it had to be a very focused gift to your patients. Tara, yeah. uh, yes, we fund bathroom mm -hmm. renovations. Doesn't matter to who. Debbie, now I can't believe you asked that question. No, you know our program. You do great things down there, but no, we don't include insurance on vehicles. It is so great to look through this list and see how many wonderful partners we have out there. Sarah, we do do parking lot, picnic tables, coverings, yes. Rhonda, that's a very interesting question about funding the construction of a canoe and kayak ramp on a river. If you own the land that it goes on, then yes, we, you know, I think we could take a look at it. Um, if you don't own that land, I'm not sure. <laughs> I 
I'm sorry, Debbie. I'm just laughing at you. Do you fund prizes that are part of a major fundraiser? Huh. Mike, we're looking at yours. We've never had this question, and it's fun prizes that are part of a major fundraiser, such as we a golf tournament. Well, we don't do fundraisers. I mean, we don't we don't fund fundraisers. Right, right. Our discussion is we don't fund, fund fundraisers. fundraisers. We've not had that question before. Um, I mean that. It, the dollars from the fundraiser would go to your clients, but the items that we would give you would not go to your clients. And we fund things that are used by and for your clients. So that's, so that's I think really that's a an great question. Interesting question um, that, I mean, we may have to take before the grants committee. Yeah. I, I don't have an I answer. I think that I would look for another item uh, in your nonprofit. Yeah. Uh, Troy has a question there about the financial section. Um, and we understand that there's a lot of different things that could cause your financials to look differently um, from year to year. Uh, we do take that into account and understand that. So you're, the ratios of financials we'll be looking at certainly won't be the only thing we look at when reviewing your applications. Um, and we do look year to year to see what looks, what looks like one year versus the other. Troy, you could also, there's a free area to type a response in this grant application. You are welcome to denote this paragraph you typed for yeah. us in there. Um, the trustees are very aware of how the finances have just yeah. been all up in the air with COVID. Yeah. So, but feel free to type that in there. Kelly, yes, yes, we do horse feed for horses. Correct. Uh, we do fund playground and, and, and outdoor equipment. Uh, Dr. Mann, we don't, well, we have funded gifts that go to particular, your particular clients. Um, I don't believe that we would fund those gifts because they go to school personnel. Um, so I think I would look at another item to apply for. Yeah. Anything that we fund must go to or benefit your clients, not any of your staff. Um, so it's, it's kind of simple. Just ask that question. Uh, there's a question from Kate about, do you all pay for technology? We have done technology for conference rooms. So if that's the type of technology you're referring to, yeah. Um, yes. But we won't pay for any, um, what do I want to say? Any licensing issues with it. We won't pay for anything like that. It, it's just the equipment. Sarah, you are asking a question about fun, fun seating arrangements, ping pong tables. Yes, those are items we would certainly fund. Christy, absolutely the items that yeah. you need for Haven Care Center, we would fund. I see Brad, our neighbor, mm -hmm. popped in. It's nice to see Bridge Haven. Jennifer, do mm -hmm. your question is, do you fund materials or equipment for museums? Yes, yes. our grant, app, our grant uh, program funds everything from social services to animal welfare to all those cultural organizations that make the fabric of the Commonwealth what it is. So yes, we would certainly look at look at that the that type of funding. Yeah. Uh what you know we potentially uh could fund the cost of instruments for kids, uh, but we do not pay for any type of instructional services or personnel whatsoever. So uh, the teacher or teachers would not be acceptable. Dr. Mann, about the laptop computer, it depends who uses is that com computer. Um, if that computer is used to teach people, help them get their GED, 
and is exclusive for the clients, yes, we have helped with those type of computers. If it's used by the staff of an organization, we do not. Uh, no, you can only write one grant uh, per that, year. You cannot write a grant for each level, if I read that correctly. Vicki, that was a good question, yeah. but no, one grant per one, one grant, grant per, per year. year. Caroline, uh, we wouldn't fund rentals of a photo booth for your clients to use. Um, if you have items that you use annually for fundraisers, such as tables that you set up for rental clients or for fundraisers or chairs, yes, we would fund that. Um, but we wouldn't fund for photo booths. Here's a question I see from Cassie. I um, asked if we would cover rent for a clothing boutique and uh, we can't fund any utilities or, or rent, unfortunately. That's one of the restrictions. Yeah. Vehicle rent? Yeah. And then here's also a question from Tavia about if we would fund a plant label maker. Um, and we have done that before, um, funded those. Um. Yeah. So Kelsey, uh, Lynn and I are sitting here about your question of vehicle wraps for new vehicles or, ve or wraps for new vehicles. That's that is really a marketing. marketing. No, I, I mean, that's really a, a marketing deal and we would not fund that. Yeah. Dr. Mann, we have funded T-shirts for the um, girls, girls Run. Mm -hmm. Eric, is that the nonprofit? Uh, yes, Girls on the Run. We've done Girls that. on the Run. We have uh, funded T-shirts for that program as well as a college-bound program. Brenda, uh, you've asked about funding for renovations last year and then flooring for the same building. Absolutely, we would look at funding that. Ashton, in regards to an irrigation system for patients, uh, yes, we would look at funding for that. Annette, Anita, sorry, Anita, you asked about security items, security system prior to June. No, we would not look at funding that. Jennifer, you asked about workout equipment for a men's facility. Absolutely, we would look at that. Linda, you have asked about different items from two or three unrelated projects. Yes, we have seen grant applications that have done that. So you're, you're welcome to do that. Jennifer, uh, you, you asked in regards to the parent organizations of a school, if you're a 501c3, I would like you to follow up with Eric on that um, because 501c3s can apply, but schools cannot. So I'd like to work with you through that. Sarah, you asked about a facility opening have anything to do with the five-year requirement? No, your e EIN just had, you just have to be at least five years in existence. There's a question from Lindsay there um, asking about window replacement. Um, we would fund window replacements and we usually do. 
several of those types of requests each year. Jeffrey, you asked about a grant writing class. Would we sponsor that? We would not sponsor. Jennifer, you fund automobile for program outreach. Yes, we have done partial funding for vans that go for school programs. Lauren, you asked about farm equipment um, for a max of 15,000. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, it would be a max of 15,000. And I think, Lauren, I think you're the Berry Center. Is that correct? Yes, I believe she is as well. There's a question from Jane, if we would fund uh, mm -hmm. starter toolkits for those taking your workshops. And uh, we would do that for those that are in those classes. Yeah, uh, Kara, we have uh, done some grants that have also gotten federal funding, but they are they are for things. Not we don't fund programs. Uh, so really, think about you have to see it, feel it. We just don't fund programs. Marilyn, do you have a question about? You guys have had great questions today. Um, let me say that. And you ask a question about vehicles used for Meals on Wheels programs. I think the answer to that would be is what else would that vehicle be used for? Um, because traditionally Meals on Wheels programs are done by volunteers. Yeah. Um, what is the other use of that vehicle? Yeah. So that really comes down to, because a Meals on Wheels program is a, only a two hour window of a day. Right. And so, and, and I would also say, where would that vehicle be kept? Leah, parking lot improvements, absolutely, we would help that. Look, Eric, you just got your job evaluation completed <laughs> by Linda Wood. <laughs> Uh, Michael, your question about the software and educational programming, uh, I would recommend reaching out to us after the webinar to discuss that. Generally, we don't fund software or subscriptions like that, um, but if you want to reach out to us afterwards, we'd be happy to kind of talk to you about the your project. Um, Taryn, you have a question about LED lighting. Uh, yes, we have funded that in the past. Um, I will say that you'll probably get quite a bit of scrutiny on your financials, however. Pamela, the question about funding a land purchase for a parking lot, um, I don't, I don't believe that that would pass the trustees to to help on that one. David, uh, thank you about the question of e-newsletters. Um, you're welcome to send them either way. Uh, we enjoy seeing what you're doing. It's probably more cost effective to send the e-newsletter news to Eric. Um, so, and that's, but you're welcome to mail us one.
Sarah, we would fund recovery literature. Erica, a um, very interesting question about organization utilities. What we have funded for clients moving into apartments are, I'll call them uh, welcome baskets, which would be the cleaning products and the sheets for the, you know, basic food items we've not funded and would probably not look favorably on doing rents. Um, we would fund study materials like MCAT books or computers for students that would be eligible. It looks like as we scroll, oh wait, David, we've got David, hold on, we're Uh, David, we'd certainly look at emergency trauma kits, um, something you can apply for. Lisa, I can't see your question. Eric? Oh, yeah, I missed that as well. I didn't see hers. Catherine, your question in regards to a healthy organization last year, would that make us ineligible this year? No, that would not. Uh, that would not. That is why we're doing the ratios that we did last year, that we're adding this year into the review process. Sarah, your questions about items for a coffee shop, I guess that would come down to who utilizes that coffee shop and those vending machines. If you're a recovery center and all your clients uh, have the ability to have access to that vending machine, then yes, we would look at it. Um, that one, we would just have to figure out who's the primary client for the coffee shop. Amy, uh, your question regards the same thing year after year. Absolutely. We have funded socks and underwear for homeless for a nonprofit in Louisville for, I have to say, 15 years. So, yes. Jeb, why don't we set up a phone call between Eric and myself in regards to your project and we can we can talk through that. Lisa, uh, I do think that you could apply for funding for for infants. All right, I think that's it. I don't see any additional questions here in the chat. If there are any, please reach out to us. Uh, we thank you, those of you that are still on, thank you for attending. Uh, and we hope that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and safe travels if you're traveling. Yep.